That's better. Hello, I'm James B. Welcome to my vodcast. That's a video podcast. And if you're seeing this on Facebook, uh, you're probably only getting uh, the first little bit. You're probably just getting eight minutes of listings. If you want to see the interview with Lenny Stout coming up in about eight minutes from now, just go to jamesb.ca or uh, YouTube and write in James B. Podcast. You'll find it that way. Uh, we got some listings, but before I get to what's happening in Toronto, a quick thank you to two of my big sponsors here, barberfinancial.ca. Uh, Captain Paul has been in business 46 years, uninterrupted service, and as my mama used to say, if you want something done right, go to a busy person. They'll get it done and they'll do it right. Well, he's been doing it right and keep it busy since 1973. paulbarber.ca or .com and he'll help you with your financial needs. Now, Barbarian Steakhouse, another sponsor. Sponsor, 7 Elm Street, right near Young Dundas Square. I'm going there after I launch this podcast today. I'm meeting a friend named Wayne Annika, and he loves to work his way through the wine list. So it's going to be fun for me because I'm like a really happy little guinea pig trying a different wine every couple of weeks uh, with my buddy Wayne. And a Barbarian Steakhouse, uh, serving happy little guinea pigs since 1959. I don't think they're going to use that one. Okay. And Patreon, thank you to everyone who has uh, donated something to me. If you're in the Toronto area and you don't, don't donate on Patreon, I want to invite you to a private party. Uh, if you are not in town, let me know what I can do for you. I am at your service if you are so uh, willing and able to help me with $5 a month or $10 a month, whatever you can do. And if you're doing nothing but watching this, that's okay too. Please share it with your friends. Okay, please. We want to get everybody out of their house and uh, into the clubs. Get out there and see some theater. Have some fun. Leave the house. Okay, forget about the TV. Lenny Stout, he's coming up in a few minutes and uh, he's incredible. Uh, we have an event for him uh, coming up. And it's going to be a big one. It is at the Horseshoe Tavern. And Lenny Stout has some health issues. He's a great journalist. So many people love him. All these musicians are coming together to play for free. So he gets the money at the door. And one of the bands is my old band. I formed this band after high school in the uh, 80s. The Look People are getting back together. And uh, by the way, people always ask me, is it The Look People or Look People? It's kind of just Look People. But so many newspapers called us the look people we don't really care just make the check payable to look people or the look anyway we're not getting paid for this we're doing it for free kevin hearn on keyboards clay tyson on guitar longo high on guitar chris gartner on bass great bob scott on drums and me dancing around screaming it's going to be a ton of fun and it's happening on the 28th at the horseshoe 8 p.m get there at 7 30 um and there's not a lot of seating there will be a lot of dancing and screaming and running around it's going to be a ton of fun a ton of bands playing there and it's called lenny we got your back so let me start coming up in just a moment. Uh, now, I do want to mention something at the Old Mill. I mentioned this last week. I have a benefit for Unison Fund. And this is all kind of cool because Unison Fund is helping Lenny Stout. And I'm helping Unison Fund uh, on April 15th. It's the last big party from my birthday week. I usually throw a bunch of charity events for my birthday. This one is at the Old Mill. It's the biggest thing I've ever done. It's it's 20 bands in 10 rooms for four hours for 40 bucks. And look at the bands. Okay, so you understand, it's going to be huge. Uh, get your tickets now, unisonfund.ca. You can find the ticket information there. You can also find out about Unison, so it's a good place to go. Now, speaking of Old Mill, at Old Mill Toronto's Homesmith Bar tonight, Pat Murray, a lovely, sultry singer uh, with uh, Stu Harrison on piano, George Kohler on bass, and uh, coming up this week, all kinds of good stuff. Stephen Cole, Russ Little, Adrian Ferrugia. Next week at the uh, next, uh, what is it, Friday? Friday, Jocelyn Barth. So amazing musicianship at the Homesmith Bar at the Old Mill Inn. All the shows, 7.30 to 10.30, no cover, and a uh, $20 minimum. That's it. So uh, oldmilltoronto.com for that. At Lula Lounge, it's Pernambaya. Pernambaya is a really interesting group. Guitar, accordion, and a really freaky little drum set. Kind of looks like Dr. Seuss might have invented it. Uh, you'll be impressed. Uh, the guitar player singer is a real charmer. The music's beautiful. Uh, get in there at 6.30, 7 o'clock. Have dinner. The show's at 7.30. 
then there's some dance lessons, then there is uh, Papiosco, then DJ Suave. It's just a party all night long. Saturday, they have their Salsa Saturdays, another great dance party. Sometimes I tell people about the old mill that like some people are so sexy, like the butts are like this, and that's the men. No, they're all sexy. Everybody's so happy there. It's a really good dance party. So you want to check out Saturdays also over at uh, Lula Lounge. And on Sunday, once again, the Drag Queen Brunch. This time it's a charity event and it's called Queen Eggs and Glam. Another Dr. Seuss reference. Um, that's pretty cool. And also coming up later, a Project for Bodo, which is women in jazz in music. Uh, then there is a speaker slam on Tuesday, Andrew Cash campaign fundraiser on Thursday, and all the information is at lula.ca. TheRex.com, Montuno Police tonight, 9.45, Bruce Cassidy's Anti-Gravity Machine tomorrow, 9.45, and tomorrow at 9.30, Tara Hazelton is performing. We love Tara Hazelton. Uh, she is best known maybe as a front person for her own band, but also in the Hogtown Syncopators. She used to sing with Jeff Healy. She's done duets with Alex Pangman. She's a great actress. I loved her in FUBAR too. Uh, and she even had a radio show at Jazz FM for a while. So multi-talented, wonderful girl, turning 40 and moving out of town so it's a birthday party going away party sunday night at 9 30 and all the other shows 17 shows in the next week are at uh, the rex.ca hughes room live love that venue too i'm just full of love for the venues of toronto and i hope you'll get out and support them don't go don't just be watching netflix all day get out of your house um i love this venue you're going to see bands like enter the haggis uh, uh, old man flanagan's ghost these are cool names. Also, tribute to Moby Grape on Sunday. Tribute to Joni Mitchell coming up, featuring Mike and Jill Daly. Mike Daly, just a know-it-all. He's actually a doctor. Um, he knows everything about music, and he's a fantastic player. And Mia Sheard is their special guest, and I love her voice. So that's a whole lot going on. High-level playing at uh, all the time at uh, User and Live. Stephen Fearing is, is uh, today. Uh, Jolly Black tomorrow. And you better check ahead for those two, because they may be sold out already. HughesRoomLive.com. And now over to JazzBistro.ca. Also lots happening there in the next week. I'm going to talk about Payadora on the 28th, a really interesting band. It's classical, it's world, it's jazz. Uh, Drew Jureka on violin, Robert Horvath on piano, Joseph Phillips on double bass, and Rebecca Wolkstein on violin and voice. Uh, I love their record. I play it all the time. I would play it down in the U.S. when I was RVing everywhere. And it's just a beautiful soundtrack when you're looking out at a beautiful vista. So I highly recommend that. Also, tonight and tomorrow, Colin Hunter with the Joe Seely Quartet. You can't go wrong. And speaking of Colin Hunter, my good friend, um, you can go back a ways. I don't know what number it was, number four or five. Uh, I interviewed Colin Hunter and I have a whole bunch of my old podcasts. They're all there on YouTube or at jamesb.ca. Uh, Colin Hunter, what a great guy. He has basically rented the Palais Royale for my birthday, April 13th. Um, as I said, I do several benefits, and this is one. He rented it. He's bringing a big band, and the money goes to Jazz FM 91, who are in the midst of a kind of a fun drive campaign for the next while. Uh, they're trying to get back on track after some interesting things and it's going really well over there so it's a great way to support jazz fm and dance your face off there's also a jazz fm event uh and i'll talk more about this next week but it's at kerner hall and they've already sold hundreds of tickets so if you want good seats you might want to go to jazz.fm and look up april 10th it's called jazz lives and it is going to be an amazing concert Okay, so I've talked about lots of stuff. Oh, and with Colin, go to palaisroyale.ca. Get your tickets for my birthday swing party. There's so much to do. Ay, ay, ay. I want to thank everybody at Patreon. If you have ever supported me, thank you so much. I want to invite you to my house. I want to go have a party with you somewhere. If you don't live in town, let me know what I can do for you. Please support independent people trying to make things uh, happen. And I really, really appreciate every one of you. All right. So let's just get over here. Lenny Stout, amazing rock journalist, having a bit of a health issue right now. Uh, we're going to talk to him about his health, about his music, about his love of photography and journalism. And uh, he's coming up right now. Pew! <laughs> <laughs> I like the spaceship. All right. Well, we are running. All right. So how are you feeling, Lenny? Today, I'm feeling wonderful. Because the sun is shining, got my sorry ass out of bed at a reasonable hour. 
and I'm here with James B to talk about my benefit. Yeah. It could be finer. I love that you have health issues, but so many people are jumping in. It's astounding. How does that make you feel? That, that part of it is truly humbling. Um, and you never really know the impression you make sometimes. And, and, and I'm the kind of person that not not really good at kind of looking back. So certain people came out of the woodwork. And I'm like, oh my God, really? You know, it was humbling. And again, a lot of um, a lot of warmth and kind of I don't know belief in humankind again. You know, because like I said, some folks were way way back and was sort of just a sidebar in my life that couldn't could believe that they got anything out of me basically or any reason you know it was very very um even even the general public at large I had a couple of incidents where people really went out of their way to help me and they, they never laid eyes on me before um, had no real reason to do it in one case he even went out of her way I'm looking back to say thank you and I realized where the hell is she she didn't even need to cross that side of the street at all and that was just the ending of this hilarious story um, yeah so, and in turn made me kind of more uh, aware of other people around me that are with all different kinds of afflictions. Um, and so, yeah, it's, um, yeah. How long has, has ha have you been on this course? When did, you, when did you notice that you really weren't well, aside from just failing a little bit? Within the last two years, I'd say. And uh, that's when the dance of the specialists began. And seven specialists, one neurosurgeon later, were still back playing the card game. And so you're trying to find out kind of what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, in the meantime, uh, yeah, it's been so interesting um, to watch the community, of which I was grateful to be part of for a long time, come up and help me out. Yeah. When did you first get your love of music? When did you know that you wanted to be somehow in this industry? <clears throat> well, um, well, my parents are big music folks in terms of always having records and that stuff around, so it was always part of... Um, matter of fact, you could tell when Mama was in a good mood because she'd be singing. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. good day to ask for some. Um, so it was always there. Dan, I was in a couple of little garage bands as a kid, you know. Then sort of drifted into it, filling in for somebody at Little Mag, and um, actually was to cover a Canadian band, Street Heart. And I went. Was this seventies or eighties? Yeah. I remember Street Heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> went to Detroit to cover them, and before the show, I'm kind of back in those days. Of course, there was as much heavy access, so I'm kind of wandering around the little enclosure, and there's a trailer, and a guy steps out and he's brushing his teeth. And then he spits and looks at me and he goes, who are you, kid? Bob Seger, because they're opening for Bob Seger. So I said, well, I'm here to cover this Canadian band. And so we got talking. He said, well, you want to talk to me? I got nothing. Sure. So I Your came, first interview was Bob Seger? I came back with a Bob Seger interview. And I was like, all right, how did this happen? I said, he's brushing his teeth. <laughs> how old were you back then? Ah, uh, early 20. I always thought of you as an adult. Even when you were only a little bit older than me, way back when, I always thought of you as an adult. Did you have that with people? Did people say you look young, but somehow you seem mature? I'm curious how you think maybe some of these musicians, when they first saw you, what did they think? I, gosh, differently. Um, <clears throat> Kate Richards was Kate Richards. Um, well, you know, <clears throat> it, was, it was very, <clears throat> excuse me, all very varied. I remember having to do Vince Gill, and I'd been told before that he could be a difficult interview, but you know, they flew me to Austin, and I get there, and Vince is doing a hell of a show. He's really, really working the audience, taking all the pictures you want. So I'm thinking, well, this seems like okay. We get back into the dressing room, and they bring in Mr. Gill, and he sits down, and he looks me squarely in the eye, and he said, okay, let's do this. And so I start, yes, no answers. But not giving me nothing to go with. So eventually I said, with all due respect, um, <clears throat> I was at your show and you were very, very good with the people. 
is there something personally about me that you don't like? <clears throat> that's to me, well, hell no. But them people got the Vince Gill they paid for. You get in the Vince Gill that doesn't like the press. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and what about Keith Richards? I, I assume you guys got along. Oh, fabulously. he was fun, man. He was amazing. Um, yeah, <clears throat> very, very, um, very Keith. But some great stories too. About Mick, of course. Yeah, you know that bastard. Apparently, when the stones are on the road, you're responsible for your room, your expenses in your room, man. So keep Mick always bring people in my room to party, man. When I'm out and leave me with the bill. <laughs> but he was, uh, yeah. Amazing. You understood <laughs> Keith Richards when you interviewed him. You could understand what he was saying. For the most part, for the most part, um, yeah. The thing I found with him is, if you approached it as an interview, interview, um, he was a little bit more less forthcoming. But if you let him just tell you how stuff went down, yeah, I remember that time Bernie Warhol did so and so, and that's how you would get into into the stuff. But, um, yeah. Do you have a different uh, way of approaching different artists? I kind of feel you have to. Um, there's a lot of folks that tell you that one size fits all. I think that's kind of selling an artist a little bit cheaply, you know. And I, I, so I always do my research and try to find out as much as I could about what they do, what motivates them. To do what they do, kind what of was your first writing assignment when you mentioned some of these like Bob Seger and stuff? What, where was your first like major assignment? Oh, major the first major assignment would probably be Tim Curry in the Star. Yeah. Again, um, Jim, you remember Jim Monaco from A and M? Yeah. And uh, I've been been knocking on their door for a while, and then nothing had happened. And then one day he called me and he said, "Oh." Um, because I was right here nibbling at the Stars door as well, so if you're going to put the two together, he said, well, can you get it at the Stars? So I think it was Sid Edelman at the time, and I called Sid and I said, um, this is guy, and of course Sid knew nothing about Tim Curry or the whole, um, Rocky Rock or Rock. anything like that, yes. So the conversation that followed was very interesting, <laughs> because Sid was a very professional news guy, and he wasn't, he didn't know about me at all, he had only seen me the one time. And um, so I had to tell him the cultural significance of the Rocky Horror Show, you see, <laughs> in terms of well, someone it, who doesn't know it. In terms how it fit the mainstream star. And he bought it. And um, yeah. And the interview was live with Tim Curry? No, it was on the phone. On the phone. Um, yeah. yeah. LA, um, but was he putting out an album? Because I know he put out original albums. He put albums. out a solo, yeah. Um, he did Carol Pope's Birds of a Feather from Rough Trade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That was a, that was a time frame. Yeah. And uh, I am a rock, or I like to rock. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah, like to yeah. rock. That's a great tune. Yeah. You like to rock. Is is rock your favorite genre? Because I know you like all kinds of music. Uh, boy, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I I listen to Chopin when I write. <laughs> I just found his etudes all in one place, all 25 of them actually, a few days ago on YouTube. So. Okay, this is something nobody imagines. Rock journalist Letty Stone with Chopin as he's writing stories. The etudes, man, yeah. It really frees up your mind, you know? Wow. And you get to let the other stuff come in, so yeah. It's cool. <laughs> but good old rock and roll, yeah. I'm mentoring this, um, this person now, and uh, she's a pianist, that's her thing, and she's mostly acoustic working. She calls me a few days because um, I, I sent her some stuff from um, a woman called St. Vincent, Annie Clark. Sure. And um, so she says to me, I've been we're looking at some of these songs we're working on and I'm thinking um, it'd be good to have a, like, maybe take a shot at an electric, right? So I think I'm going to buy a guitar and learn to play an electric and I'm going to do it for my show in two weeks. I said, okay. So last night was the show, and um, of course it bombed halfway through, but then she finally picked it up, and at the end of it, you know, she saved the day. Um, despite she did not wear effects pedals and kept cussing out, the whole thing was wonderful. Um, I wanted her to get her feet burned, so it was wonderful. But um, when it worked, I could hear the band behind her. That's when I knew, yes, the song should be electrified. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm closing my eyes, yes, I can hear it. I can hear drums and bass clear as day, and I can even hear a Hammond D3. Um, 
you were one of the early guys to write about a, like local bands that were really interesting, like Killer Dwarves, who aren't actually dwarves or midgets, but 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 like bands like that from back in the day. Did you were you looking out for these bands, or were some or most of these assigned to you, like Rock Express or some of these papers? Yeah. No, um, none none of that was really assigned. Uh, the hard rock, I really fell into that when. Rock Express started a heavy metal magazine called Metallion and was handed to me like, you know, to keep me out of trouble, which completely went the other way. Um, it was highly, highly appreciated in the U.S. We couldn't keep enough of it on stock. In order to do what I was doing in Music Express and Metallion, I had to enter Persona. So I became Stunner Crunch. And You're my, Stunner Crunch? And my faithful photographer, Phil Raganez, became Filthy Phil. And we embarked in a reign of terror in the U.S. <laughs> that left people going, y'all are Canadians? <laughs> That's great that you had a pseudonym that I actually remember the byline. That's hilarious. Well, I was talking to Keith the other day, and he said we still get kids. Keith from, Sharp from Music yeah, and Rock Express, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, he said, I, um, I still get kids asking land. So who was Standard Crunch? Because he's got the old issues. Um, yeah, I can't tell you. He might still be active. <laughs> But now, you, you did so much interviews, you also must have, because I've seen a few of your pictures of, of people from back in the day, um, uh, Getty Lee, Tom Petty, you must have actually taken a bunch of pictures, even if it wasn't a professional camera, right? Do you have a, a big collection? 1989 was the year of the um, Tiananmen Square Massacre. It was also the year of a fire that destroyed just about everything I had. You know, it's a bad fire when I came home after the whole thing. I'm sitting on the curb and this huge fireman walks out of the door and he looks around and he goes, whose record collection was that? And he comes over man, pats me on the shoulder and goes, dude, man, I'm really sorry. I thought, oh, shit. And your photos too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My family stuff. I lost everything I owned in 1980 in a house fire. All my records. All my puppets, all my really, writing. Yeah? I was in the hospital because I had bubbles. Um, amazing. We both went through losing everything. Did, yeah. did you find, once you got over the fact, I mean, I had the pleasure of actually being in the fire, and I mean that because yeah. then I value my life more than my stuff. If I came home and all my stuff was gone, it might take a little longer for me to get over that. It, I wouldn't be thinking so much about my life, I'd be thinking about my stuff. How was it for you? Well, um, the fire was caused by careless smoking in the apartment below mine, and I really wanted to kill that boy, like really, because he was, <sighs> um, yeah, it took a while, quite a while to process it, because people would ask me, you know, family members would ask me, yeah, do you have that picture of you and your mom? <laughs> you <know? clears throat> um, yeah, so... Um, a lot of original tapes, including my famous Michael Jackson tape. Um, gone, gone. But... Did you, did you somehow have that forgiveness or figure out that you got to move on or, or does... Well, yeah, eventually you have to. I still remember the words of Granny, though. If you have a catch that boy in your crosshairs and ain't nobody around, drop the hammer. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> My, my granny was a person I like thought. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I don't mean to laugh, but that's pretty heavy. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. Permission to commit murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so you move on. But, I mean, the loss is, you know, irreparable. Every now and again, I find, like, I, I just found a shot of me and um, Eddie Grant. The, Electric uh, Avenue. Electric Avenue, Eddie. Uh, um, <laughs> the guy who gave, gave me a great quote. He talked about being a musician and stuff, and because he was the guy who was into wanting his masters from day one, right? Eddie's very wealthy, and we're talking about that, and he said, "Well, the thing about it, Lenny, is that you really have to um, stay with it and make money from your craft. Because if you don't make money from your craft, pretty soon you wind up being no musician at all." You've got to support yourself for making the thing because if you take a day job, whatever, you're bleeding off. You know, so you wow. Know. 
That is good advice. And that's why he was, in terms of making money, was successful right off the top. And all his masters and all his own too. Yeah, he found who was the most challenging interview when when you couldn't get like you've already mentioned a couple when you Vince, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah Vince Gill somebody that you you had trouble getting something out of or somebody who just was not there well one of the most difficult and in the end hilarious interviews ever was Nina Hagen um, German punk rock pop star indeed and this was just after the birth of her baby and she, we were here in Toronto I think she's staying at the King Eddie one as I was, and um, she was a very volatile person, as you can remember. And so when I got there, her attendants were all dressed in black, and the woman comes at me and said, "Got to tell you that this is not a good day for her, so um, you know, keep it light." Because I tended to like to have a few questions that that would kind of go a little bit. Deeper or over the land, whatever. And um, so I said, "Well, okay, I know." So she comes in and um, dressed completely in black, wonderful looking. With the child also dressed, a perfect Rosemary's baby it was wonderful, right? <laughs> so, um, so she gets into the whole thing about introducing the child. I forget the holy name of the child, and then she tells me the child is a reincarnation of the Buddha. So this whole this went on for a couple of minutes, and. So I said, you know, to try to cut to the chase, uh, well, are there signs? What do you mean? I said, well, the holy ones that are born with signs to the child. So she just, just flipped around and she just went ballistic <laughs> that I dared to challenge the child's Godhead, you see. <laughs> and so we did some theology, and after a while, <laughs> she came around. And I said, no, can we talk about the album? Because there's some damn good stuff on it, you know. The look people the are look, getting together. The look people, man, yeah. 20, I, I was wrong, by the way. It's not 21, 23 years 23 since look people years. played in Toronto. Uh, that's going to be an amazing show because, um, yeah, it's been 23, again, for a band that was so influential and so ahead of their time. You know, that was the thing. Yeah, like, you guys, it was nothing like the look people. I remember your quote. Uh, look, people got the late feeders out of the salad bar and uh, bum rushing the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that was at the Copa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, full set from the uh, look, people. Now, we can hear any new material or just the classics. It's the classics. In fact, what right. what the band did. Uh, this was Kevin Hearn's idea. He said, let's go back and do the songs he liked, like Lovely Samba Chicken and Five. Yep. Do the songs that were right at the beginning. Because we we released one record, uh, and everything was going so lame at the time that we don't think anyone even heard it, even though it was a great record called yep. Crazy Eggs. But it wasn't the famous one. It was Boogasm or Small Fish, Big Pond. It was... or, or uh, 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 more songs about hats and chickens. <laughs> Which was instead of more songs about buildings and food from the Talking Heads. Um, so those were the those were the records when you were in the audience. So we went back and got those ones for the show. Oh great! Oh excellent! Yeah, excellent. yeah. We wanted your we wanted your favorites, yeah. and that's based on reviews that we found that you, you gave us. <laughs> okay. By the way, none of us have that good of a memory. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. <laughs> so the horseshoe is coming up. Uh, there's going to be money raised for you, and I just wanted to quickly go over a few of the things. First of all, relocation. Yeah, it's going to have to happen um, sooner rather than later. I'm involved with the city on that front. Um, there is some scary stuff, but I'm trying to chop through that. And by scary, I mean a 10-year waiting list, even for disabled people. Okay. Right. No, it's a, it's a hurry. It's a rush. We need to get this to happen. My quick. daughter, my doctor sent me this letter. It says urgent in large letters. Yeah. Telling me, well, I'll we'll check out Wood Green. Let's see. Uh, medication. Yeah. Thank you. Not all that's covered, right? No. 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 Um, yeah, and uh, it's becoming a thing because. This because the situation is not being addressed in the physical plane, things like the painkiller. I'm going to keep doing painkillers, these painkillers for the next little while. Um, and they're not covered yet. And then, transportation? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to get me a. Um, again, they make it so hard to get trans, wheel trans. It's, 
you have to go through so many damn applications and all of that. And I flipped them out because, okay, no, you have to go to your doctor and get a note saying, I said, excuse me, this guy is like a GP. He doesn't have time to be writing. It's a waste of his resources. I couldn't believe it. Because right. Arisa, when you call him, this is his number. His assistant will tell you that I'm a patient. Yeah. Not only is that, I'm looking at someone, speaking to someone who's as far away from me as you. They can see I'm damn well disabled, you know, but so why do you need a doctor, though? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I kind of went off on him, but, you know, at the end of the day, he was agreeing with me. I said, no, it's not your thing, but really, you can see. Can you just sign the paper, you know, dude? That's right. Really? And even the time, so I want to get a wheel trans to go to the doctor to get the note to bring it to you. There, ex exactly, yeah. It kind of, yeah. Little catch twenty two there, um, and uh, a home worker and uh, and counseling and and, and uh, rehabilitation. All of that's kind of aside from what OHIP would normally cover, right? Yeah, yeah. They told me I didn't. It's another wonderful, and I don't know why I don't qualify for the home worker thing. So I'll have to um, for full coverage. So I'll have to chip in for that. Too. Well, I'm really happy that so many people are coming yeah, in really. for this. Uh, there is a, a little GoFundMe where people can help if they can't come to the concert. Otherwise, they can just pay extra at the concert, right? And there's also an auction. Um, and I, one, the item I know about is there are four prints of David Bowie's famous The Archer. Right on. Yeah. And I believe the band's um, Robbie Roberts' autobiography. Some more stuff, I'm not sure. The organizers don't tell me much. They just, oh, feed, me. They just feed me. I feed have me something back. for you. I think we can get some real money for this. It's never been opened. It's the band, and oh, it's a wow. full box set. Yeah. That should, that should do something. Are you sure? Maybe? Raise a hundred bucks? Sure. Includes a Blu-ray audio. If anyone is a fan of the band, oh, that has yeah. everything they need. It's probably a couple hundred bucks on eBay or on, on uh, if you try to buy it online. Wow. So we're going to get lots of stuff out there for you for the silent auction. You've got some amazing bands, a great backup band for the singers, and Unison Fund will be in the house, and I know they're going to be getting, they're going to start helping as well. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you, James. Yeah. Thank you, man. I think it's going to be a great time. So what's your parting advice for people when they're feeling bad, when they've got health issues? <laughs> you really have to try and look on the bright side. Um, you really do. Uh, in activity, you know, activity. Um, one of the things that kills you, the devil finds you. I work for idle hands, that kind of thing. It really, yeah. Um, for instance, uh, Sandy was telling me, because you like this, you don't have to file every week, you know, cut back, and, and if you file, cut back on the workload. And I said, well, no, because what else would I do? Probably get into trouble. So, best so keep to, writing, keep working. Exactly, keep your head down and do what it is you do. And if you're a musician or if you're just a regular person, um, do you focus on what makes you feel good. Yeah. Because that's, that's your responsibility, you um, yeah. Funny thing, um, all of this, the hassles that they throw in front of you, things like getting real trans, and then the final question is, so how are you? Are you depressed? Are you having any stress issues? Well, you know, <laughs> I do now. Apart from you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they mean well. You can see it in the little faces. They mean well. They're just not thinking of what they just said. <laughs> Great oh, to man. see you. Pleasure, thank James. you, thank Lenny. you very, very much. <laughs> Yeah. Who doesn't love Lenny Stout? That was wonderful. Listen, we're having a party for him. I hope you can make it. It's at the Horseshoe Tavern, Thursday, uh, March 28th. Tickets are just 20 bucks. And uh, it's only at the door. So get there early. Doors at 7.30, show at 8 o'clock sharp. Get there before 8. Uh, you're going to see Big Red Jake, Laura Hubert, Danny Marks, Look People, and so many others, all raising money for a great guy and having a rocking party. Thanks to the Horseshoe. They donated the venue and the sound man, and we're going to make as much money for Lenny Stout as we can. Um, now, next week, Lou Pamonti is going to be coming in talking about his career. He was the uh, organ B3 
uh, Rhodes, piano, every kind of keyboard player for Blood, Sweat and Tears with David Clayton Thomas back in the day. He also uh, has won awards. He's got a Grammy for working with Michael Bublé, producing and arranging for people like Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, a musical director for Aretha Franklin when she was in town a few years back, and just an amazing guy. So we'll hear stories from him. And he's also... Uh, the musical director of Jazz Lives. Now, this is happening at Kerner Hall on April 10th, and it's an amazing showcase of local talent, courtesy of Jazz FM. It's a fundraising event for them, and he is a fantastic music director. Information for that show, jazz.fm. And until next week, thank you for watching. Please share this with your friends with Wild Joyous Abandon. Let's get everybody out to some of these parties coming up in the next little while, and I will see you next Friday. Cheers.